Welcome to the Wikimedia Foundation campaigns team December office hour. Welcome all. My name is Lauren DeLynch, she, her, and I am the senior technical program manager for the campaigns team. In this meeting, we will introduce V1 of the event registration tool, so you can begin using it for real events on MetaWiki. This meeting is multilingual with live interpretations in Arabic, English, French, and Swahili. The Swahili interpretation will be using the Spanish channel in Zoom. In the Zoom chat, I will share a few links with you for this office hour. We have an etherpad where you're welcome to post any questions that come up during the presentation. We also have a slide deck, which Ilana will be sharing. You're welcome to follow along. And one more link, we will be using TestWiki for our demo today. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to put them into the Zoom chat and we will get to them at the end. Now I will turn it over to Ilana Fried, Senior Product Manager for the Campaigns team. Hi everyone, I'm Ilana. Uh, nice to meet some of you. Nice to see some familiar faces. Um, so today I'll be presenting some work we've done and this is going to be interactive. So you will also have the opportunity to go along with us and test out the tool. But if you have any problems or any questions, I think some people need to be muted. Um, for questions and answers after the demo, but we will have another demo on Saturday for people who want to try again or ask us more questions. Um, and I ask that if you uh, are in this call and you're not speaking, if you mute yourself so we can hear things more clearly. Okay, so now I will start. Um, so first, what is the campaign's product team? We are a team at the Wikimedia Foundation, and we are focused on building and improving tools for campaign organizers and participants. When we say campaigns, we're talking about things like edit-a-thons, different events that bring people to contribute to the wikis. But we're also building tools that can be useful for other kinds of events. Dans votre option de traduction, il y a French en bas. Sur la barre de tâche, il y a French. Vous sélectionnez French. Vous pouvez suivre la traduction en français, s'il vous plaît. So some of you attended our last office hour. So I'm going to briefly talk about what makes this office hour different. There's two main differences. Um, the first is we made some improvements to the tool. So the tool that we'll demo today is the same tool as last time, but it's a new and improved version. Um, and then secondly, we have released the campaign events extension, which has the tool to MetaWiki. That means that after this call, if you're interested, you can actually use the tool for real events, not just on MetaWiki. I will now introduce you to our three product ambassadors. So we have Anthony, who is providing interpretation today for Swahili, George, who is providing interpretation today for French, and Bashunda, who is providing interpretation today for Arabic. If you have any questions, you can post questions in any of the languages that these presentations are in today in the chat, and we can respond. I saw the chat, Dardesha, and Arabic is 
in the Arabic channel. Swahili is in the many tools for people read and takun hadi al adat part of is what we that means that the cool one of the mean on mushariki where you to rock is where there are features for both organizers of events and participants um the goal is that we want to improve and simplify workflows related to top pain points so when we say pain points we mean things that are difficult now so in other words, what are the things that are most challenging to you as an event organizer? Or what are the things that are most challenging to you as an event participant? We want to improve that experience so it's easier for you to manage and participate in impactful campaigns. Uh, also, we want the features to be modular and extensible. So by modular, we mean that features can be separated or recombined, and then extensible, meaning features can be added over time. Okay, so now let's talk about event registration. So by event registration, some of you may be familiar already with how event registration works on the wikis. So oftentimes someone might click edit and they add their signature on the wikis. Alternatively, there might be off wiki solutions. Uh, so some examples of these are, you know, using some external platform to register participants. Now, what we're doing that's different is we want to create an on wiki event registration solution so someone can easily click register without having to click edit or add their signature and then they can register for the event. So this is what we've built and it'll be what we're showing you today. Um, so now from the participant side, there are benefits to this as well. So participants can more easily join campaigns with minimal effort, and their first point in the, of contact in the campaign will be fun and inspiring. So what we mean here about the first point of contact in the campaign is right now, if someone were to register on Wiki and they're newcomer, they're not very familiar with the Wikis, it might be pretty confusing. They might think, why do I need to click edit to register? How do I add a signature? Why do these tildes mean signature? Does the organizer know I registered? How do I remember that I register? There's all these open questions. So we want to make it easier. So when they register, they think, okay, I registered. That was done. The experience is clear rather than having so many points of confusion or open questions. So now let's talk about V1. The last time we demoed, we demoed what's called V0. Now we're demoing V1. So it's a new version of the tool. Before it was called V0 because it could only be used on test environments. It was on the beta cluster. So since then we have released the extension to more test environments. It's now also available on test wiki and test two wiki. And we'll be demoing on test wiki today, but it's also available now on a real live wiki where you can create real events. It's on MetaWiki. So for that reason, we call it V1. Now I'm going to start the demo portion of this presentation. Um, a few things about the demo. You might notice sometimes my screen seems to go dark or change. That's because I'm going to be alternating between the slides and test wiki. It doesn't mean that things are disappearing. So um, you'll see how that works. Um, so as a starting point, what I'm recommending people to do is to test on test wiki. So for real events, of course, you would use meta wiki, but because we're creating test events today, it's safer, easier environment for us to all do it on test wiki. So as a starting point, I recommend that everyone goes to test.wikipedia.org. And I will do that as well. But before I do that, um, I want to explain this other step here. 
So it says in the future for real events, log into MetaWiki. We're skipping this step today because we're just doing it on TestWiki. Um, but the next step is I'm going to confirm my language and time zone and preferences. Language, because of course, <laughs> I want things to be readable by me and time zone because we're talking about events today, right? So times, time zone, those are important things. So if we set up our time zone preference before we do the demo, then it'll make things, I think, easier for people. So now I'm going to demo this and show how it works. At any point, um, there's any problems seeing my screen or things look weird, please let me know. Um, but now I'm going to go to test wiki. So again, test wikipedia.org. So I'm already logged in. If you're not logged in, this will be the time to log in. As you see, I'm using my actual work Wikimedia account. You don't have to create a separate account like you had with beta cluster in our last call. You can use your own Wikimedia username to log in. So if not, um, everyone can take a second to log in. Now, once you're logged in, there's two things that you should do. So um, access preferences, how you access preferences will slightly vary depending on the skin you're using. Um, you can also go directly to this URL. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to check my language. So here it says English, right? EN, English. But if I wanted to change it to other languages, I could do that. So for Arabic, AR, for French, FR, and then we have, scroll down a little more. Here we are, Kiswahili, SW. So I'm going to go back to English. Oops, but please choose the language that is your preference. Once you've done that, so that's in user profile, at least that's the term in English, um, I go to appearance, the second tab, and I'm going to pick my time zone. So I'm in New York, so mine is set to American New York, um, but there's a ton of time zones. They're sorted by continent and then by a city, so you can pick the one that works for you. One quick tip, is um, if you don't wanna scroll through the whole thing, but you have a specific um, place that you want, there's a good chance that you're, it's already stored with your browser. So if you click fill in from browser right at the top here, then at least for me in my case, you'll see it goes directly to America, New York. So everyone can pick their time zone as well. Um, if you don't want to change your time zone, that's fine. It'll just, it will already have a setting. It'll just be the wiki's default setting, which I believe for meta and test is UTC. Um, but that is how you set up if you want your own time zone in place. Hey, Lana. So, yeah. Um, someone is asking in the chat if you are able to zoom in when you're demoing just a touch. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can. Is that better? So I'll show. Is that better? Yes, it's better. Cool. Thank you. So I use fill in for browser. Let's say if I was this, I could change and I wanted, I could change it easily, fill in from browser, and then it's going to my time, New York. Um, and then I will also, with the zoom in, go to my language. Here's under internationalization. I have language and I picked EN for English. Um, since these were ready my selections, it doesn't say save, but of course, if they weren't my selections yet, um, the save button would be what I would need to click then to finalize my changes. Okay, so now I will go to the next step, but if at any point, again, you have questions about that first step, 
please feel free to reach out and chat. Now, as a next step, we're going to create an event page in the event namespace. So this is the same as creating any other wiki page. The only difference that's important to call out is that's in the event namespace. So the event namespace was created specifically for event pages. So you'll see why <laughs> when we create the page, but it's augmented in ways that allow you to do things that you can't do on normal pages. So um, to now, oh, for creating pages in TestWiki, it's a there's a little, there's a few quirks. I've seen something um, in the chat, so I'll go over how to do it. So um, I will first explain the format of creating that page in event namespace, and then I'll demo it. So um, the way you create an event page in the event namespace is event colon, and then the name of the event. So let's say my event, I want to call Ilana's edit-a-thon. It would be event colon Ilana's edit-a-thon. So now let's show how to do it. Okay, so um, I'm gonna zoom back out. So there's, um, on TestWiki, there's like a slightly different way to do this. I'll show you because if you just do a let event, Alana edit a thon. Um, you have to, it actually says you need to go to special search. So this is one way. Um, another way is there's also create a new page link in the sidebar, which also should work. So both of those are a way that you can create a new page in test wiki. So I'll do it via search. And here's the red link. Um, to clarify, when you're in meta, I don't think you will need to go to the special search page. I think just the normal search bar will allow you to create the red link, but that's how it is in TestWiki. So now that you are on the page to create an event. Now we're just doing a test page. This isn't like a real full scale event page. In the reality, you probably want to add a lot of photos or text or exclamation. We're doing something very quick and easy today. So I'll just write something like, Okay, and then I publish changes. And this is where we'll stop and we'll just give some time for people to do this. And if they have any questions, they can ask them now in the chat. Okay, so now I will continue. So we just did this step here, which is adding content to the event page. Like I, like I said before, in reality, it would be much more extensive than what I wrote. I did something very basic. Um, but now the reason why we create this page is so we can enable registration. So now because I created the page, in other words, I'm the organizer, I see this pop up on the page. If someone else went to the page that I created, they wouldn't see this pop up. But I do as the organizer. It asks um, if I want to enable registration on the event page. So I can either click the blue button to enable registration, or I can click the gray button to dismiss registration. If I click the gray button, it's okay. It's not my only opportunity. There's also a link on the page that it remains there for me as an organizer to click. But this is the quickest, easiest way is via the button. Um, once I click the button, it brings me to a form 
where I can fill out all the information on the event. When I'm done, I click enable registration. And then it's recommended, it's not required, but it's recommended that you review your changes so you see that all the information is correct. So now I'll demo this process for you all. Okay, so here it says enable registration. As you'll see, there's another enable registration link if I click dismiss, but I will go ahead now and click enable registration. So it already has the name of my event in this top part here. It knows what the event page is because I came from the event page, right? So now let's set the time. Um, so I'm gonna choose it to be in American New York as a time zone. For let's say I'm gonna have it start tomorrow on the 6th. And let's say, And this is going to be a long event. So I'm going to have it go till January 10th. Um, now you have a choice between online, in person, or online and in person. In other words, this is a hybrid event. So I'll choose this just because it has the most options so you can see how it works. So you ask, it asks here for the meeting URL. So this would be something like what we have right now, right? So we have a Zoom call. So this is where you could add the call link for Zoom or any other video conference platform. I'm gonna say it's in the United States. I'm just going to make up a fake address right now. And then group chat invite. So this could be something like a Telegram or WhatsApp group, you know, any sort of external platform chat invite. Um, and the meeting URL and the group chat invite will be shown to participants after they register. So that means that after they register, it'll show up on the event page and it will also show up in their confirmation email that they receive in their inboxes. So I see there's also some information at the bottom only usernames will be collected from participants during registration. So in other words, we're just letting you know as an organizer what information is collected. And this is also something that applies to events that are hosted or funded by the Wikimedia Foundation. Events hosted or funded by the Wikimedia Foundation are required to adhere to all Wikimedia Foundation policies, including on youth safety. Okay, fine by me as an organizer, I click enable registration. And now it says registration is enabled. Participants can now register on the event page. So this is what it looks like with registration on the event page. Now it shows manage event because I'm the organizer. If I was the participant, here's an example of a page I didn't create. It says register for event because that would be the participant side. Now I can review the chain, all everything I wrote, you know, the start at the end time, the location, the links, just make sure it all looks good. I think it looks good. So I've now set up registration. Um, so now I encourage all of you to go ahead and do this. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them into the chat. We're here to help. This is one of the biggest parts of what we're demoing. So we definitely wanna make sure that people understand this and get their questions answered. So I'll wait a minute or two and then we'll continue. Also, if people have created an event page, um, and they want to share it, feel free to post the link in the chat. And for anyone who might need to leave early, I see there's some questions um, about if they have to leave early. Yes, we are recording this, and we also have documentation for all these steps available in multiple languages. So there'll be other opportunities to try it out, to learn, and we have another office hour on Saturday. Cool, cool, I see some other pages. So let's let's check some of these out. Awesome, here's a page. 
Here's another page. This is great. So one thing you might notice too is um, what it says for time zones. So this you see is an online and in-person event. So because there's an online portion, I as the participant see it in my time zone. But now this one, if we go to it, it's an in-person event. So it just shows in the local time zone. So that's why you would see the difference in time zones. And then for anyone who's still, who's getting a little confused or they want it to be demoed again, um, what I did, I'll quickly do one more time. So I'll do it via this time, create a new page, but there's a event. And this time I'll call it architecture edit-a-thon. So I'm creating a new page. So I create an event colon, blah, blah, blah. That's the page I created. And then I click enable registration. I fill out the details. And remember, this is, this is a test event, so it can be anything you want for the links, you know. Um, and then I click enable registration, and that's how you create the page. Okay, we're getting another uh, request for creating the event page. So I'll, I'll do that one more time. So there's two ways. You can either go to the create a new page link, which I'll share again in the chat, or um, you can go to special, let's see, I don't remember how to get there. So I'll just <laughs> do this. Um, Here it is, yes, special search, or you go to special search, and then you just type in event, and then the name of the event. So let's say I'm really passionate about biology, and I want to create an event on biology. I do biology edit-a-thon, so event colon biology edit-a-thon. I'll click search which puts up the red link, red link meaning the page hasn't been created yet. So it says, create the page event biology edit-a-thon on this wiki, I click it. And then that's how I create the page. So I can add any information. And then I click publish. And then that's when it allows me to enable registration or dismiss registration. So that's how I do it. I see another event was created. Amazing, that's awesome. Cool, cool. So now we're sharing our events, which leads to the next topic, which is signing up for events. So how to join an event as a participant. So, um, there's a lot of events that uh, people have created. There's also events that people created in the past. So you can choose to join one of the events created by people in this call today, which I recommend, or you can search for other events that have already been created on TaskWiki by going to event colon and then search. But bear in mind, if you search for all the events on the wiki, some of the event pages might not have event registration enabled. Some of them might have registration closed, which we're going to demo in a bit. So one of the easiest things to do is probably just um, register for an event that was created today. So I'm going to register for some of these events to show you how it works. Um, oh, actually, first I should talk about private versus public registration. Okay. So first, let's talk about what registration is and what the options are. So to register for an event, as you can probably see, there's the blue register for event page. So you need to be logged in 
if you're logged out, you will first be redirected to the login slash sign up page where you can then log in or sign up and then it'll bring you back to the event page for you to register for the event. So assuming you're logged in, you click register for event. And then you have two options. You can register publicly or register privately. So the way, what it means to register publicly is that your username will be in a public participant list that everyone can see. So whether someone is a participant or not, whether someone is logged in to the wiki or not, it's just a list that anyone can see. Now, private registration, which is the second option below, the second image, you'll see it has public registration toggled off and then it says private registration only the event organizers can see your username in the participant list. Private registration is an option if you don't want your username to be displayed publicly and you only want the organizers of the event to see that you registered. So this might be because maybe the event is on a sensitive topic, maybe it's in a sensitive region, maybe you personally want to have some extra protection. So if that's the case, you can choose private registration. Uh, I also see a question in the chat, can you register and unregister? Yes, and I will demo that as well too. Um, so is this, yeah, so I'll just do that after a little bit because it's a few <laughs> slides in the future. Um, so I'm going to now register for a few events and just show what it looks like. So for this event, I'm going to register publicly. So I choose public. Um, there's also some information at the bottom. By registering, you agree to terms of use, privacy policy, universal code of conduct, and any local friendly space policy provided by the event organizers. I say, okay, and I register. Oh, many people have registered since I just registered. So I see here that there's actually four participants, but there's only three here. And that's because one participant chose to register privately. So I can't see their username, but the organizer of the event can see their username. Um, now I'm going to demo registering privately. Was this the same event? Yeah, okay, I'll do a different event now. So for this event, we already have one participant, five participants, very cool. So for this one, I'm going to register privately. I click register. And now when I look, it says, okay, you are now registered for the edit-a-thon. And it shows me at the top and it has this little um, lock icon. So it lets me know that I'm private. And that is how you register for an event. Um, and I encourage anyone else who hasn't done it yet to give it a try. So again, register, this is public, this is private, I'll do public. So I register for the event. And now this is my, let's see if anyone registered for mine. Cool. So I click manage event and I can see one person registered privately and it shows the icon here to show that they register privately. So to do that again, if it's your event, instead of saying register for event, there'll be a button that says manage event. And I can either here, click here for more details and see who registered privately, or I can go here, manage event, participants, and see one person registered privately. And I guess someone just registered. <laughs> so we also have one public registrant. So that's how the private versus public registration works. To change from public to private, I see there's a question for that. Um, so let's look at this right now. I'm public. I can just cancel my registration and then choose to register privately. So now the easiest way to do it, the main way we have to do it is that you unregister and register again. We're looking into ways we can make it so you don't have to unregister, maybe some kind of choice that you can have in the user flow. But for now, the way you would do it is you would unregister and then register again. Um, in terms of the choice, 
Right now it's on the participants. So participants can select uh, if they want to register privately. I see there's a question if organizers can make it default. We don't have that as a feature yet, but if you think that would be useful to organizers, please let us know in the section that we're gonna have at the end where we ask what features people want us to work on yet, because if that's something you want, we can totally explore that. Um, so that is how you join event as a participant. So the next thing I am going to demo is the confirmation email. So um, when you register, you also get a confirmation email. So this is a new feature. We didn't have this actually when we demoed V0. So I'm gonna show you an example of my confirmation email. Uh, so let's add this as tab. So you can see that three minutes ago, I got this confirmation email that says the event that I joined and more information. Since I registered more than once, that's why I got sent to me because I registered and then unregistered and registered again. But you get the basic details of the event, the date, the time, where it's at. Um, you can go to the event page directly from that link to learn more. So one thing about the confirmation email is um, in order to get the confirmation email, you need to have an email address associated with your user account and preferences. Um, so you don't have to, in order to create a Wikimedia account, have to have an email address associated with your account. So some of you may not have an email address associated with your account. So this will be the time to check that you do. Here's my email address, good. If you don't, I recommend that you add it, not only because it's helpful for things like password resets, but that you can also get confirmation email. So part one is you need to have an email address associated with your account. The second part is if you go under notifications, you'll see notify me about these events. And you'll see here event registration. This should be checked by default under email. But for some reason, if you see that's not checked, check it off if you want to get email. Now, if I would, didn't want the confirmation emails, maybe I think it's too much information, I don't need them, I could uncheck it and then save, and then I won't get any of the confirmation emails. So the user has that choice, but I do want them. So I'm going to leave it as checked. Um, so now we'll leave a minute for everyone to check their confirmation emails, and then we'll go to the next step. I see some questions in the chat about removing participants and we'll be talking about that, uh, I believe next after the confirmation email. So one more minute and then we'll continue. Okay, so now let's talk about canceling registration. So there's canceling registration from the organizer side and the participant side. So first I'll demo it from the participant side, then I'll demo it from the organizer side. Um, but I'll share the slides first, so there's not too much like switching back and forth between TaskWiki and the slides. So from the participant side, if I no longer want to register for the event, you know, maybe I'm busy that day, maybe I get sick, whatever the reason, I no longer want to be registered for the event. So to do that, I click on the trash um, icon and then it unregisters me from the event. That's the participant side. Now for the organizer side, now let's say I as an organizer want to remove participants. There can be different reasons why. Maybe um, I see someone is in the participant list who's caused problems in the past. It's a trust and safety issue. Maybe the person is just having difficulty unregistering themselves. So uh, they've asked for help from me. 
Whatever the reason may be, it's important that we give organizers the tools to manage their events in the ways they want. So we also have that ability from the organizer side. Now, from the organizer side, uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is if you are on the event page, you can click manage event. You select the participants. So you can select one participant, um, you can select many participants, and then you again have the trash icon and you click remove. So now I'll demo both of these from the organizer side and the participant side. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So here's an event I'm attending. Am I still attending? Yeah. So if I click this, it asks, are you sure you want to cancel your registration? I say, yes, I am no longer registered. No longer has my name here either. Now let's go to my event. I'm trying to remember where it was. I'll look at my contributions to find some of my events that I created, maybe. Okay. This one. So I clicked manage events. As you can see here, it says manage event. I go to the participants tab and I can choose to select all. I can select one. So let's say Bashunda told me that he can't attend, but he's busy. He has difficulty removing himself. I will just remove him. I click remove. Again, it asks, are you sure you want to remove the selected participant? I say yes, and then they're removed. So now they're just two people in my list. So now I'll give people a minute to go over this again to either remove themselves as a participant or remove someone else as an um, organizer. And we'll just wait one minute and then I will continue. I saw two questions that I'll answer while we're waiting. The first one is if you can have a limit for the number of participants. Um, so right now we don't yet have a feature for a limit, but we have something where you can close registration. So let's say you want only 10 people to register and you see that there's 10 people that registered, you can close registration and I'll demo how to do it. But if you would like a feature where there's a limitation and then there's a wait list that maybe that gets set up after the limitation has been reached. That's another thing you can let us know about in the question answer section at the end, because we'd love to hear if that would be a useful feature to you. Um, another question I see is, can you add more than one organizer? Not yet, but that's something that we know that we want to build because many events have more than one organizer. So one of the features we'll be working on soon is what we call multiple organizer support. So you as an organizer, when you're configuring the event can add in the usernames of the other people who are organizers as well. Another question, how can you add some of the features that we have that we as chapters and user groups like to add like banners, flyers? So you can still add whatever you want to the event page itself, since it's a normal wiki page. That just wouldn't be part of the event registration header. Um, if you want more customization around the email confirmation message, we don't have anything in place for that right now. It's just a simple automated message, but we can talk more um, at the end about what um, additional customizations um, around banners or flyers would be useful to folks. Okay, so now let's talk about edit registration. So there's many reasons why you as an organizer may want to edit registration. Maybe you made a mistake, maybe things changed. Whatever the reason, it's important of course for you to be able to edit. So there's different ways you can go to edit. You can do it via the event details page or my events and you choose edit registration, then you'll see that the registration form, it says edit event registration at the top and there's an edit registration button. So make all your changes and then it's saved. So I'll demo how to do that now. 
Oops. So I can either go here back to your events and here this, this page here, I'll share this link for anyone else if they've created more than one event. This is like your master list of all the events you created. So I can on my events page, go to edit event. Or another way you can do that um, is you can click on via event details, edit. Or <laughs> if you're on the event page, you can click manage event, which brings you again to event details. And from there, you can click edit. So let's say I wrote that's 500 Jackson Road, but I made a mistake. It's actually 550 Jackson Road. So I make the change. I see at the top, it's edit event registration. The URL also says special edit event registration. And then I click edit registration. The registration was edited, see event page. I click on it more details and it is now 5650 Jackson Road. So that's how edits are made to the event information. And I can make this change as an organizer. Other people cannot make this change. If there's multiple organizers though, in the future, they would also be able to make this change. So we'll give people a minute again to edit their registration. And then we'll talk about opening and closing registration. We have a comment about, so here's an event that was created. And then uh, I'm testing this. And my impression is that the box at the top ends up looking small. Are you talking about the registration header or the banner? If you add all the banners and text. Um, so I, if you're talking about the registration header, yeah. So if you would like it to be bigger, that is useful feedback that we could totally test and look into. One of our ideas at the time is if we made it too big, we were worried that it would take up too much space on the page. And there's so many other aspects of the page, right? People can have navigation headers and menus. They can have all these images. But um, if people feel like they want that to be more prominent, that's totally something that our designer could look into and that we could you know, potentially change. Nothing is set in stone. This is exactly why we do these calls to get feedback from people. So if other people feel like the registration header should be bigger, uh, let us know now in the chat or at the end when we talk about various next steps. Okay, so now let's talk about opening and closing registration. So when you create an event, and you enable registration, by default, registration is open. That means people can register for the event. But uh, registration, sometimes um, people want to close registration before the event ends. So if I have an event that goes from January 1st to January 10th, if someone goes to my event page on January 20th, registration will already automatically be closed. I don't need as the organizer to do that. However, Let's say my event goes from January 1st to January 10th, but on January 7th, for some reason, I want to close registration. Maybe I feel like enough people have registered. Maybe there's an issue that's come up that I need to investigate. And before I want more people to register, I really want to just pause it and I can look into things. Whatever it may be, that's a feature that's available. And we wanted to make it easier, easy for people to close registration and then if they want, reopen it. So I will demo how that's done. Um, again, there's a few ways to get to it, but you can go to my events 
or edit in my event detail in event details and I'll show how. Um, and then if you go to my events, you'll see there's these three dots that you click on. And then you click open or close registration. Um, so I will demo now how to do this. So we talked before about the special my events page. Special my events. So if I want to close registration, I just go to the three dots and I click close. If registration was already closed, instead of saying close registration, it would say open registration. So I click close and it's automatically closed. So for me, when I go to the event page, it will still say manage event. But if I was the participant, it would no longer have the register for the event button, it would say that the event is closed. Now, I will also show how to reopen through a different method. So I manage, uh, let's do edit. So another way you can reopen and close is going to edit event registration. So here it says event status closed. I'm changing it to open. And now my event will be open and it'll still say manage event for me, but for other people, it would show register as a participant. So that is how you open and close events. Um, and we'll have people try that out. Um, and I'll answer questions again while they're doing that. Um, someone wrote, could you allow notifications for subscribers of events when organizers make modifications? So um, this is something we don't have yet, but we do know that it's important to people. So there's different ways we could potentially do this, um, but we definitely wanna hear from you. What would be the most useful way for you to be notified about changes and what kind of changes would you want? Would you want it to be something that, you know, you watch a page and see your watch list? Would you like to get emailed about changes? How would you like to be informed of changes? A uh, question about registration deadline. So registration, as long as the event is still going on, is open. So the registration deadline is when it's the, you know, event end date and end time. Unless, of course, you close registration earlier and then you kind of manually alter the deadline. Okay, so the last thing I'll be de demoing is delete registration. For this one, um, I will preface by saying, I recommend you don't actually delete registration. <laughs> I'm gonna show how you do it, but then I also am not gonna complete the process and I recommend that you don't either, just because um, it's, I would imagine that for people who are trying this out, doing the demo, it would be useful to keep what you created during the demo today and refer to it later rather than having it deleted. But if you want to delete it, we will show now how it's done. So you go to my events, you click on the three dots, and then you select delete registration. So I'll show that now. So I can go to manage event, and then back to your events, or I can directly go to this URL, special my events. And if I want to delete registration, I click delete registration, um, but I don't actually want to delete. <laughs> I want to leave this page up for people who maybe sign up for as participants, whatever it may be. So I'm going to click cancel. But if I did click delete registration, it wouldn't delete the event page. So it's important to understand the event page is still a normal wiki page with the rules that apply. So the event page stays up, but that registration header is no longer present. And that is how I do delete. So um, that ends the demo portion. Um, so now uh, while people check that out and try that out, feel free for any part that I demo to ask about things in the chat. But now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of our ideas and next steps, and then we'll open it up for more questions that people have in any conversation. Okay. So um, this is what we've built so far, but 
basically we want to do more stuff for you all. We want to know what's important. What are your highest priorities? What do you want us to improve? What do you want us to build? So this goes into what's next. So we have some ideas of what features could be useful to implement next, but we need to know what you want. And we also ideally want to know the priority because there's so many things that we can do, but of course we need to know what's higher priority. Um, so we'll share some of our ideas, um, but let us know if those ideas are high priority to you or if you all want something different. So some of our ideas are organizers can send a customized email message to participants. So right now, if I would want to email all the participants in my list, if they have an email address associated with their account, it'd be kind of tedious, right? Like I'd probably need to go to their user page and click email this user and I'd have to do it individually. Um, or if I wanted to go to their talk page, I could send a talk page message. But um, if we have a part, we already have the participant list. So if we could allow the organizer to select which participants they want to message, and then there can be some sort of panel, they can write like a e message and then it gets sent over to the participants. But it would function just like email this user and that I don't need as an organizer to see the email addresses of the participants in order to send the email. I only see if they respond to the email. So that's one feature, organizers can send customized email to participants. Another is integration with a programs and events dashboard. So we're already talking and working with Sage from WikiEDU around this, but basically the way this would work is um, if you have an instance, a dashboard instance that's set up for the event, and then people register for the event, then um, their username, if they're publicly registered, will be automatically pushed to the dashboard. So you don't have to, as an organizer, add them or ask the participants to add them. Um, as for, I think someone asked about event metrics, we can also do it for event metrics. And we've talked about actually, after we do it for the dashboard, also doing it for event metrics. So that's would just be like the first tool. Um, support for multiple organizers, we already talked about this, but basically instead of just having one organizer per event, there could be multiple organizers per event. Uh, support for events that have multiple dates and or times. So you can think about this office hour. We have one that's today, and then we have another one that's Saturday. So this is the same kind of like general event, but there's two separate dates and times. So a way for the organizers to specify two different dates and times, and the participant when they're signing up can say, okay, I'm attending event one or event two or both. Um, organizer being able to mark themselves as a participant. So there's actually a workaround where you can do this now, but it's not like very intuitive in the UI. So we can make that easier for you as an organizer to do. Um, and then lastly, optional questions that organizers can ask participants. So these are things like the organizer asking the participants what their gender is or their location or why they're joining the event or what devices they have or if they need support with transportation or internet access. Um, so that's what that one's about. Um, so let us know if any of those ideas excite you, if there's other ideas that you think are higher priority, We'll also be asking these questions uh, in our feedback form. So you have opportunities after this call to do it, but just wanna let you know that we have a chance here to talk about it. Um, so next steps. Uh, so please continue to test. We have three test environments where you can do that. The beta cluster, test wiki and test two wiki. Um, share your feedback. Please don't be shy. We want to know what you think. We want to know what you love, what you hate, what you want changed. Um, so we have a feedback form. Um, there's a link here um, in the slides, but there's also a QR code, which I'll share in a second. But um, we use Lime Survey this time. Um, it's available in four languages. So you select whatever language you want and then continue with the survey. Uh, if you prefer though, to give your feedback on the talk page, all the questions, that are on the survey, we also ask in the project talk page. So you can provide your feedback there as well. Um, subscribe to our newsletter. So we have a newsletter. Some of you are already subscribers. We thoroughly encourage you to join. That's where we give updates on our work. Uh, we also have a Telegram group. It's a multilingual community for organizers. We share updates, other people can share updates. Please, please join.
Oops. Um, and now uh, for anyone who wants a QR code to the survey, I'll leave this up for a second. You can put your phone up to the screen. Um, and if you capture the image, it should bring you over to our survey if you prefer to access it that way. Um, and then lastly, let's talk about real events. So um, the reason you were all able to create events today as an organizer is because it was on test wiki. On test wiki, we don't have special rules for who's an organizer. Anyone can be an organizer. But in the real wikis, and, or I shouldn't say real, the live wikis, um, there's rights. So for meta wiki, the first live wiki that we've released this to, um, we're allowing people who have the organizer right to create events with registration enabled. So if you want to do that, if you say, hey, I think I want to create an event in the next few months with this new registration feature, let us know. And then we can add you to the list of event organizers who will use this tool and have this right. We want to know this information soon. So we'll be reaching out to people who join the event and the office hour to ask if they want to be test organizers. Also in our feedback form, we ask people if they want to be test organizers. Um, if you have some questions around how to use the tools, tools still, you want more training and support, we can pro totally provide that. It's not like you're left all alone. If you choose to be test organizer, we'll provide more guidance and instruction, but we just need to know who wants to be one so we can add them to that organizer list. Um, so now we'll open it up to questions that you may have or comments or thoughts. And we just want to thank you all for coming. I talked a lot. <laughs> thank you for listening to me. But now I'd love to hear from other people some more. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate any feedback or thoughts. Thank you.